I'm uh, J. William Leonard. I'm retired from the Federal Service, spent 34 years uh, primarily in the national security arena. Most recently, I had been the director of the Information Security Oversight Office, and as such, had responsibility for executive-wide uh, oversight of the uh, national security classification system. We have seen, uh, during the course of the Obama administration, more prosecutions under the uh, under the Espionage Act for disclosures, uh, for alleged disclosures, not to enemies of the United States, but to members of the media and for trying to get issues into the public uh, sphere for debate. We have seen more Espionage Act uh, prosecutions in, in the Obama administration uh, than we have seen in the entire history of the Republic up to this point in time. I think the effect is very clear. It sends a very chilling message to um, to anybody with a security clearance, whether they're in the military, whether they're a, a federal employee, whether they're a uh, defense or intelligence contractor, it sends a very chilling message to members of the media that the government is willing to use one of its most potent tools in its arsenal, a prosecution under the Espionage Act. And in such a matter, by simply asserting national security in a, ma a manner that, for the most part, escapes pure accountability, that that sends a very chilling message. And so uh, whether it's not their intent, again, I can't read people's minds, but I do know what the effect is, and the effect, I think, is very clear. The irony of it is is that individuals with security clearances, members of the military, federal employees, contractors with security clearances, they are routinely held accountable for improperly disclosing classified information or improperly holding classified information. People lose security clearances. People lose their jobs. People go to prison for this. It happens routinely. The real issue is, is that on the flip side, nobody is ever held accountable for abusing the classification system. Most people are familiar with um, the three levels of classification, confidential information, secret information, and uh, top secret information. The basic framework of the classification system hasn't really changed since the uh, era of the Manhattan Project. It's uh, very much a relic of the uh, industrial age. Uh, the basic principles have been the same. Uh, classification is, quite frankly, is a critical national security tool. Inherent in classification is also uh, the human tendency to, uh, to err on the side of caution. Uh, people routinely are held accountable for improperly handling classified information or, or improperly disclosing classified information. So there's this human tendency that when in doubt to, to overclassify. Um, that's almost reflexive and it's, uh, it does significantly undermine the integrity of the classification system. But in addition to that, uh, because of the uniqueness of classification, because it's a, 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 almost a unilateral authority of the executive branch, there are occasions where classification, in fact, is deliberately abused, where it is used uh, explicitly to um, deny information to others for, for, for various reasons, for political reasons, for, for reasons of precluding embarrassment or, or whatever the case. Well, the, the substance of uh, the felony charges against Drake dealt with some, um, some documents that, uh, that the FBI had discovered in his basement or his office uh, after a, a search of his, uh, of his residence. Um, Drake was not accused of um, disclosing any classified information to unauthorized persons. Uh, he was not accused of disclosing classified information to members of the media but he was disclosed of uh, having I uh, improperly retained information in his personal possession that the government considered to be classified. I, uh, ironically, I was very looking forward to, um, to um, testifying in the Drake case um, because, uh, again, I'm very, very concerned about the, the routineness with which representatives of the federal government, especially in courtrooms or what have you, will uh, simply assert national security classified information and what have you. And I was looking very f much forward to being able to um, uh, instruct 12 ordinary Americans, members of the jury, 
that you don't have to accept that assertion on, on the part of, of, of your government. That there are actually standards, there are actually rules, there's, there, there's actually prohibitions and limitations in the government's own, own rules in this regard. Officials of the National Security Agency and senior officials of the Department of the Justice in the cool of day had the ability to take a look at that document and say, is this really classified? And they did not do that. And instead, they deliberately and repeatedly asserted that it was classified. And in fact, had it serve as the basis of the first felony count indictment against, against Drake, when, when anyone could just even glance at that email and tell that it did not even minimally meet the government's own standards for classification. So this was a case of not just the mindless overclassification that occurs every day. This was a deliberate, repeated decision by senior officials. And that's why, from my perspective, those officials need to be held accountable for that deliberate abuse of the classification system. Some of the greatest damage to our nation has occurred as a result of needless classification. I mean, just think back to, um, to um, August of 2001. Uh, a presidential daily brief entitled um, Bin Laden Determined to Strike in the U.S. Imagine if that, instead of being in a top secret code word document, was plastered across the headlines of uh, every newspaper in this country. I dare say there would have been a lot of questions asked, there would have been a, a, a much increased uh, heightened awareness, and, uh, and the events that w occurred um, the following month may, may truly have had a different outcome. Quite frankly, I, I, I believe that the government has demonstrated itself as being uh, unable to, to reassess or to do anything of a meaningful na nature to address overclassification. Um, and I think the perfect example of that is, um, is the WikiLeaks situation. Uh, whether you agree with it or not, WikiLeaks presented the government with an excellent opportunity to take a look at a vast universe of information that had been subject to uh, unauthorized disclosure and assess, begin to assess, what does it tell us about our fundamental assumptions in terms of what kind of information can cause damage to national security and what can. I mean, it was, it was like uh, having a, an opportunity where uh, individuals get accidentally exposed to radiation. You don't want that to happen, but once it happens, it gives you an opportunity to, to analyze it and study it and, and, and enlarge your knowledge and come to some conclusions and maybe make some efforts and changes to, to improve processes and things along those lines. The WikiLeaks situation presented the government with an excellent a test bed, if you will, to, to, to begin to question its fundamental assumptions in terms of information that requires protection in the interest of national security, what really requires protection, what doesn't. And nobody, that not only did the government not even give an inkling of having such an initiative on their part to, to, to truly tackle this problem of overclassification, they instead just doubled down and said, well, the solution is, is to somehow, some way, uh, polygraph more people and come up with more rules and come up with more regulations rather than addressing the, the fundamental assumptions. So I've come to the conclusion that the government uh, uh, is, um, is, uh, is, is, is just incapable of this.